Hi, I'm Robin Sanderson. I'm one of the owners here at Little River Trails Aquaculture. I used to work for NC State University under Dr. Harry Daniels with the Flounder Program. I was the former uh, hatchery manager there. And then I became, a, uh, I was asked to become a partner with Larry and Wayne Lanier, two brothers, who used to own this chicken farm here. And they uh, wanted to convert it from chicken farm to a fish farm. We, hear, we have uh, over a million gallons of recirculated water. We do have flounder here. We uh, talked to uh, Walker at UNCW, and I'll let Walker take it from here. And he's going to talk to you about uh, more about the flounder. Uh, yeah, my name is Walker Wrightmore, and uh, I work for the University of North Carolina at Lillington Aquaculture Research Lab for about seven years in Wade Watanabe. Um, I acted as uh, the broodstock manager for about the last four years, um, where my duties included uh, maintaining our captive broodstock, our spawning, um, producing the eggs, and as well as the larval rearing in the hatchery. Um, we had to constantly uh, maintain the broodstock year-round. We had three separate systems where we were able to manipulate the spawning seasons and produce eggs almost on a year-round basis. Um, about every year, we partnered with uh, local fishing tournaments um, that were the fisher, Fisherman's Post as well as the Flat Bottom Girls Fishing Tournaments. It was an excellent source for wild caught broodstock, which is really important to introduce them, keep introducing them into your brood so you're uh, producing separate uh, genetic um, lines of offspring. Uh, we also mix all of our females' um, eggs that we spawn. When we do the artificial fertilization, we're always mixing them with multiple males, two to three, three to five uh, different males, so we can always increase that genetic variability. Um, we, uh, Robin brought me in because we, through my research, uh, my thesis project was induced spawning, um, so we supply multiple commercial users as well as uh, research and producing with, uh, with southern flounder eggs. So there were uh, uh, facilities in New Hampshire, uh, Texas, uh, Delaware, Florida, um, but there was a point of demand for flounder eggs. Um, Robin brought me here so we can uh, not only look at flounder as a food fish, but potentially stock enhancement. Um, the effects of stock enhancement have uh, highly debated but have never really been done in southern flounder on a large scale. Um, and it really comes down to, uh, in the right location, if you partner with, you partner with uh, fishermen, um, as well as fishery biologists, we, we should be able to determine a, uh, a, a good site as a nursery area for these fish. Um, Texas uh, is now running multiple state uh, stock enhancement facilities where they actually came to North Carolina and learned the spawning and larval rearing practices where they were developed here at NC State and UNCW, um, and the benefits are just now being able to be seen. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes, uh, it takes time for these fish to grow and actually be able to be seen by commercial fishermen, harvest, as well as recreational anglers. Um, so not only is it going to benefit uh, you know, commercial harvest, recreational uh, fishermen, but also the tourist industry. With the current hatchery production technology here at LRTA, we have unlimited potential for southern flounder fingerling production, as well as the benefits to commercial fisheries, recreational fisheries, and state tourism is also has the potential to be unlimited.